tighten your seatbelt. It's going to be a bumpy walk. Chrissy is hilarious. Chrissy, have you ever heard of the comedian Basha K. Ali? No, that sounds like something you yell at before you blow up a plane. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty seconds remaining. But you know what you say? I doubt it. That's the I have to do this respect for you all. I was very confused by the title "Everything Everywhere All at Once" because that's also what we call it when the ass takes off his shirt. <laughs> 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 I shouldn't be up here. I should be in school. On the other side of the ocean. Hello, hello, hello. I am back from San Diego. Uh, you are listening to the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. You can hear this show on, gosh, everywhere. Facebook, uh, YouTube, Spotify, SoundCloud, Rumble, Rockfin, Twitch, Twitter, uh, all over the place. So do hit the subscribe button on YouTube. If you haven't already, remember to like and share this episode with a friend. Before I bring in my fabulous guest, I have a couple more stand-up shows to promote. Again, thanks to everyone who came out this weekend in San Diego. We had such a blast, Lila Hart and I, uh, at the Mic Drop Comedy Club. Uh, some familiar faces that we know. Some people took planes to see us perform. And some new faces, too. Always good to meet new friends. And we had just so much fun. So the next show I'll be doing will be in Dallas, Texas, Thursday, January 25th. Uh, at one of my favorite clubs, Hyenas. This is the club where we had the viral heckler moment with the land whales and the Dylan Mulvaney uh, super fans. So if you like that, I can't promise that that'll happen again. I can only do my best. <laughs> and then I'm headlining... Uh, back on the East Coast in Morris Plains, New Jersey, Saturday, February 24th at Tiff's Ale House, also known as the Dojo of Comedy. Get your tickets on my website, chrissymayer.com. Also, I will be presenting an award at the Grifties on Saturday, March 9th, also at Tiff's Ale House uh, in Morris Plains, New Jersey. I, that will be hosted by Hotep Jesus and Uncle Hotep. I think this will be their third annual grifties award so i think you can get tickets for that on their website or uh, the grifties website sweet and then i have to give birth and they won't let me fly anymore because the apparently the stewardesses <laughs> i can't not call them stewardesses sorry the flight attendants don't want to clean a placenta from the aisles which i guess i sort of kind of understand Okay. Uh, our guest today, she's a great Twitter follow. If you are interested in all things uh, baseball, politics, culture, uh, give this gal a follow uh, on Twitter. Her handle is, uh, well, I call, I say little gel, but it's spelled L-T-T-L-E-G-E-L. -E I'm so happy to have on the show today, Angelica. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having me here today. For a second, I thought those were kettlebells hung up behind yeah. you. <laughs> no, they're coffee mugs, see? I was like, that makes more sense. <laughs> okay, Angelica, I'm so excited you're here uh, because usually all of my dumb baseball questions I, I ask to my husband. So it's nice to have to unburden him for, for a moment. So uh angelica i want to know just generally before we get into the trevor bauer news which is pretty exciting i want to know generally just how you uh became a baseball fan and how and how you started following um you know the mlb and just watching it in general okay um well when i was about eight years old i used to go well that i mean that's when i became a baseball fan but uh i used to go to my grandparents house with my family and they lived kind of in the middle of nowhere and i was mostly the only kid that was there and when adults sit and they talk about things that now i talk about uh it's not fun for kids you know it's you think it's like 
grown up talk and it's not fun. Um, so I was always bored going up there. Um, but my grandfather always had baseball on TV. So I found myself watching it a lot. And at the time, I really didn't know anything about it. But I was just sitting there and watching. And there was a baseball player who just kept hitting home runs and kept hitting home runs and kept hitting home runs. And I was like, who is this guy? Like, he's so good. He's always hitting home runs. And his name is uh, Alex Rodriguez, who at the time played for the Rangers. So I was actually a baseball fan before I became a Yankees fan. And I will always be a bigger baseball fan than I am a Yankees fan. No, not Barry Bonds. I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> but, um, and then Alex Rodriguez was traded to the Yankees. And I loved watching him and learning his story and seeing how he interacted with some of the other great players, uh, Derek Jeter and Mariana Rivera and everybody like that. And then he contributed to very well. Uh, I believe he won the World Series MVP, contributed to the Yankees' last World Series, and still will always be my favorite baseball player. Uh, still would love to see him in the Hall of Fames. Probably won't get there because of steroids, but that is a whole different oh conversation. Um, but that's how I became interested in baseball. And actually, the, the Twitter connection, I had to make a Twitter in college. And I thought, this is the dumbest thing at the time. You had to like, make a Twitter for college? Yeah, I went to college for journalism and communication. Okay. And I had a class that they wanted us to learn how to like market and talk to the outside world. And I had to make a class. And I was like, this is so stupid. What am I going to talk about? And I just started talking about baseball. And people started responding. And people started following. And I was like, OK, I guess people do care. So I graduated college in 2011 and still on there talking about baseball. So I guess it. Thank you, college. But um, so I definitely didn't expect it to uh, go that way. But yeah. did you enjoy? Uh, I mean, you first became interested in Arod because of his talent. Did you enjoy following? I, I guess maybe because I'm just like <laughs> I'm such a girly girl. Maybe I like drama a little too much. But I enjoyed following, um, like the the A Rod and Derek Jeter sort of like they were friends. Then they had friend breakup. Then there was like all this kind of relationship drama between them. Were you were you following much of that at all? A little bit. I mean, I I'm the person that more likes stats and the good plays than the drama between people. So I mean. People like worship Derek Jeter and no disrespect to him, but he wasn't even the best shortstop on his own team. So, um, did he? Did Jeter make it into the Hall of Fame? Yeah, I, I believe so. Okay, recently, I believe so. Yeah, that's right. And then if they if they overlook steroid use, they, I mean, I feel like a lot of people would be on the table for Hall of Fame uh, would right. be considered. Also, like, didn't um, Gary, Gary Sheffield's dad, he kind of dabbled a little bit. I don't know. Um, it's a whole lot. Of, it, that's a huge issue, though. And uh, people feel very torn about it. There's kind of like maybe more if you're like more a purist, you're like, OK, well, if there's any performance enhancing drugs at all, they shouldn't even be considered. And I guess that's where things are falling with A-Rod. Now, this story about Trevor Bauer has been so interesting and has been going on for really two years now. And I don't know if you guys in the chat have heard this, but um, Trevor Bauer uh, is a major league pitcher. He, gosh, he's like 32 now. He played for the Arizona Diamondbacks in 2012. He played for the Cleveland Indians uh, 2013 through 2019. Uh, or, yeah. Um, and then after that, he played for the Cincinnati Reds 2019 and 2020. He played for the L.A. Dodgers uh, kind of most recently and uh, in 2021. And then he had this whole scandal. Muffin, what are you doing? No, Muffin. <laughs> She's eating some. The dog is eating something. Um, <laughs> so then Trevor, who seems like a sweet guy, uh, he, he got involved in a bit of controversy with this girl, Lindsay Hill. 
uh, who I think is obvious, just went after him for his money. And I don't know how these text messages were released, but she basically these text messages came out with between Lindsay Hill and I guess a friend of hers, which showed very clearly her motivation for pursuing Trevor Bauer. Like, I'm going to make this guy basically like choke me out. Like it seemed very premeditated and manipulative. And she uh, ended up, I guess this was like maybe two and a half years ago, ended up accusing him of, of, of sexual assault of, you know, something related to that, you know, basically me too to him. And then he was uh, suspended from correct me if I'm wrong, 324 games. He couldn't talk for two and a half years. He had to relocate to Japan. Uh, so that's where he's been playing, I guess, for the last. It, his suspension was reduced to 194 games when he appealed the. Oh, okay. Okay, 194. I mean, that's still, how much of the season is that? Uh, a lot. It was the longest uh, the longest suspension in, in baseball history. So, a lot. And, and like, uh, Angelica, tell me, how would you rank Trevor in terms of pitching skills? Would you say he's like one of the best at the time or? Or currently, like where was um, where would you sort of rank him when this happened? Well, he won a Cy Young in 2020, I believe, and and people like to argue that it was a shortened season, and they call it a Mickey Mouse Cy Young, and they, you know, they don't. Um, I, I think people like to undercut things when they don't like the person themselves, and I think that's a big thing is that. Uh, Trevor Bauer was known for actively tweeting things, uh, maybe wasn't the most professional in his regards. And personally, I'm not somebody that's offended. I follow him on Twitter. I, I like seeing it. I mean, there were things that, you know, somebody like fans would say really rude things to him and then he would respond and be the same way. And people didn't like that. And they'd say, you know, you're a professional athlete and you should be better. And Maybe he should, but he's still a person and he's not like, why should he have to take that just because he's a professional athlete? I actually like seeing that he's a real person and he has a character. And I, you know, as much as I like baseball, I don't, I don't like this. Everybody has to be professional and be one way and we can't expose our character or yeah, yeah, you can see the cat um, <laughs> or you can see, I have three, so you might see more, Aww. but um I, I don't like that everybody has to be just so rigid and so one way. I mean, there's people that don't want him because of things he said on Twitter, because of things he likes on Twitter, which I think is absolutely ridiculous. As a baseball fan, to me, what's important is how well they can perform and help the team win because we root for them for their talent, not for things that they like or support. And realistically, we don't even know them. So I think that that's really odd um but he he started out tweeting and he was saying things like he had rules for uh he he didn't want relationships he was only going to engage in casual sex and things like that and he started saying that a few years ago publicly which again i don't care but being a professional athlete maybe not the smartest decision um and so I feel like people already kind of didn't like him. Like he was a mm. very, I feel like people, people had a very controversial opinion on him. Um, I actually, I've always liked him. I would love for him to be a Yankee, which he said he would like to be too. Um, so we'll see if that ever happens. But um, I've actually read a lot of, a lot of personal articles and things that were written about him and i think he's very interesting um he has said that he wasn't somebody who just you know was a, a popular athlete and it just came to him naturally he said that he was somebody that didn't fit in that he was bullied as a kid and he was just trying to find something his niche and people used to make fun of him for playing baseball all the time um and what i found really interesting in that is he learned like different angles and different ways things can be manipulated to make him better instead of just some of these i mean obviously his talent too but instead of some of these people that just go out and have this raw talent and they go to a hitting instructor and they're like hey i i need help and they have no idea what actually goes into that i think it's 
really cool that he can study like the physics of baseball too and understand, hey, this is how I can improve. And he's released some videos. I know in the settlement um, with Lindsey Hill, one of the things that he fought for was that he could still talk about it. Mm. Um, and to me, that says a lot. I, it, I mean, if you can put yourself in the situation, if I were sexually assaulted and the person, or if, if I was a man and I was sex- accused of sexually assaulting somebody, I would want to talk about it. I would want to clear my name. I wouldn't just be silent. Um, and I actually feel like Lindsay Hill is doing the opposite. I've seen her on two podcasts. And if you don't know, she, after the whole incident with Trevor Bauer, apparently she texted him and said she's never been more turned on in her life. Oh, come she, on. Really? Oh. And, and she, went back. She, went, she went back the second time. She went after the assault. She went back a second time. And when she was questioned on the podcast, this podcast that I'm referring to was done with Sarah Gonzalez. When she was questioned with uh, why she went back a second time, she pretty much dodged the question and said, well, that's why I have lawyers and witnesses and things like that. And she didn't really have an answer. And the same thing, if you can put yourself in that position that you were sexually assaulted, I would I would be giving details. I would be very wanting to talk about it, whether whether I'm Lindsay Hill or Trevor Bauer. I would want to talk about it her because you would want to make sure that you know charges are filed and and things like that. Um, and and Bauer because you want to make sure that if you believe you're innocent, that you want to speak and you want to clear out your name. And that's exactly what he's doing. Um, he sued the Athletic. Uh, which is a newspaper, a sports newspaper, if you don't know, uh, because Molly Knight was a reporter and she um, she posted that in the article, she posted that Lindsay Hill had a fractured skull. And oh, they damn. have medical records to prove that that wasn't true. The CAT scan said that that wasn't true. Um, and Trevor Bauer sued the athletic and Molly Knight for defamatory because he said that he broke her skull. And once the athletic was willing to retract their statement, they rewrote the article with like a star saying, you know, CAT scan results proved that there wasn't a broken skull. He dropped, he dropped the lawsuit. Just like Lindsay dropped the lawsuit once they came to a settlement. So I 100% agree with you. I, I think it was a setup. I think she was after money. Uh, because as a woman, I mean, you can put yourself in that position and that's not the way I would react. That's not wow. at all the way I would react if, if that happens to me. That's interesting what you said about his, how he approached pitching because he actually went to college. He went to UCLA to study mechanical engineering. So I wonder if that, uh, that kind of engineering mind helped him figure out different ways to approach pitching and helped him, you know, give him an edge or in addition to just sheer, you know, working out and practicing and, and getting the reps in. Um, That's so interesting. And I watched that interview that you mentioned between Lindsay Hill and Sarah Gonzalez. I really appreciated that because she didn't throw her any softballs. She asked her a lot of hard questions. She called her out on a lot of stuff. I think she may have also gone on, uh, with Alex Stein and I know I know both um, Sarah and Alex and Alex is more goofy and he think I think he just wanted her on kind of for the fun of it I don't think he wanted to really grill her or anything but I was glad that that Sarah really did uh, was a little bit more critical there and it's just it's so interesting because I watched him on uh, with Tommy Lauren recently and he, you can tell he's gained so much perspective since this happened and that it, it really, uh, to use baseball puns, it was a real curveball. I think, and since he was tweeting and saying, yeah, I'm, I'm just playing the, f- I'm just playing the field. I'm just going to round third base. No, he was saying like, I'm just, I'm just hooking up. I'm not looking for anything serious, which is the perfect thing uh, that a certain kind of woman would hear and be like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to get in there and just uh, take advantage basically. Uh, he said, I made a lot of mistakes that put myself in a place where that could happen. And you can tell he's just, he's really taken the time because he's been in Japan. Or I don't know if he's back in the U.S. yet, but 
how long was he playing in Japan for really with the last he, two years? He was there for two years. And actually it seemed like I'm sure he wanted to be in the U S pitching, but he added some velocity to his pitching. He said he's gotten to his highest since 2014. And he said he also picked up a splitter because apparently everybody in Japan throws splitters. So if anything, I mean, people could say before that, you know, maybe you don't think Trevor Bauer is the best pitcher, but he's better now. He's he's pitching faster and he has a splitter. And on top of that, he made the point that, you know, most people, um, most people they train for, they have, they play baseball, 162 games, and then you have the off season and they're doing something else in their training. But he was playing baseball for 18 months he didn't have an off season because he was in Japan. He was just constantly training. So, I mean, honestly, he's probably like, I mean, he's, he's 32. He's not, you know, a, a spring chicken or whatever anymore, but he's probably in really good shape, especially as a baseball player, because he's been adding to what he already had. What is a splitter? Is that like a spitball? <laughs> <laughs> is that, Oh God, I think I know. I think that's where it is that where it curves. I'll have to ask Frank. Um, that's really cool. So he has been working really hard, not really taking very much breaks. Yes, probably hooking up with a ton of Japanese girls. <laughs> I see you in the chat, Fealty. Um, I, I see them in the chat too. And <laughs> I thought it was really nice that whoever said my camera looks like it has Vaseline on it. I'm sorry I didn't clean my camera, but <laughs> my fiance is actually the one that responded to you. So thank you. Also, Tyler. Um, <laughs> there there's he's, some, wa he's watching upstairs <laughs> there's some uh goofballs in the chat some uh guys come on behave for angelica come this is she's not doing podcasts all the time this was a special get for me because you could tell she knows a lot uh about the subject here if it was me by myself talking about this uh there there would be just two people watching yeah. um so i just think that's uh, i feel so bad for this guy and he is completely ostracized by sports media, the, the whole of sports media. And like you said, sure, may, maybe that one publication, you know, retracted that part about Lindsay Hill's skull not really being fractured. But people memory hole this stuff. How many people are really going and looking up and checking in to see what the updates are? Uh, I think there there is so much damage that is done right away when these allegations are made, when then this when this news first hits the circuits. Um, and that's what most people remember. I think it takes a lot for someone to actually clear their name, which is which is why it's great that Trevor did not uh, agree to not talk about it because he just sort of waited patiently two and a half years. And I'll never forget like the day he he started putting it out there. It was like brr, he like let it rip. He had like a Twitter thread going. Uh, he had all his receipts in order, all the texts from from Lindsay, and uh, it was it was really incredible. But you just, I figured, yeah, all right, all right, he's got all this proof. What's actually going to happen? Um, what do you think the process will be like for him to get back into the MLB? Well, um, I mean, he he pretty much went two years without talking about it um he's finally he you know he had a couple tweets trying to uh clear his name like you said but he pretty much wasn't really saying anything he was just working in japan and trying to stay in shape and do baseball and i think finally now that things are starting to settle if you look he's been all over he he's been all over different media all over Tommy, Tommy Lauren just had him on there yesterday. I saw her tweets like he's been everywhere and he is finally talking about it. Um, he tweeted out and said, you know, basically he made mistakes. He grew as a person. He's he's not having casual sex anymore because, well, look, <laughs> this is what happens. Um, but I mean, the whole the whole thing ends up, in my opinion, at most a mistake was made, uh, a communication error. and he from my understanding there were texts saying that she liked uh sex to be pretty rough she liked to be hit and things like mm -hmm. that so it, at most it was a communication error a mistake that was you know misunderstood but the way i look at it is there weren't any there weren't any charges filed um they settled over money and then 
he tweeted out and said he made a mistake. He said he was going to change his behavior. I mean, I don't, I don't, you know, there's other people, there's other players in MLB who have done bad things um, that have abused their wives that have done things and they serve their time with the police if they need to. And they are suspended from whatever protocol that baseball has, they're suspended. And then they're reinstated and they're able to play baseball. So I don't see how Trevor Bauer is any different. I don't feel like a society is meant to be a vigilante to decide whether or not he can have a job back. Mm -hmm. Um, Because at some point, you know, it is his career too. Um, So it really, I think it's going to take some time. I know he was at the meetings. Um, that they had for for the off-season meetings where they were trying to sign different players. I know he was there, and it didn't go anywhere. He didn't have a team Mm -hmm. sign him, but that doesn't necessarily matter and mean that there aren't people interested because there's also tons of other players out there that are still free agents that haven't been signed either. So I think it's going to take somebody really needing pitching and somebody willing to take a chance and something somebody willing to say you know what we're gonna put this all behind you uh again i think he i'm a yankees fan and i think that they would be great for each other i think the yankees are a very professionally run team and maybe it would change his behavior a little bit and make him improve his image uh i also think professionally he could pitch really well on the team so i think both you know, uh, pitching wise and for an image, since people seem to care about that, I I think that he would make a great candidate for the Yankees. But I also see a lot of fans tweeting and saying they would love to have him too, because good pitchers are hard to find. So if you want to win baseball games, you sign a good pitcher. And I, I think Bauer's a great pitcher. So I, I think it's going to take a lot of time, but I do think that eventually he will be back in uh, in the MLB, hopefully this year. Do you Would you say it's like 50-50 in terms of like repairing his image from like a public relations standpoint versus showcasing his actual skill level? Or would you say it's more his image, more a team has to get over like a, a little bit of the bad reputation or the the memories of of all the crap that's happened to him versus like would a coach just be like, Oh no, he's, he's, he's skilled. Let's just get him on for that. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, like I said, I know, I know the Yankees are super professional. I mean, maybe they just say, Hey, scrub your past tweets. And, you know, I mean, obviously people know what happened, but yeah, the guy that just, just commented, yes, the Yankees had Chapman, they had her mind. they, they have other bad people on their team that or I shouldn't even say bad people, people that made bad decisions um, on their team. And, th- and that's why I said, I mean, I don't really see how is he any different if there's other people in MLB that did things and even were charged for things. Yeah. Why actually is found guilty. the outlier that he can't come back to baseball? Um, I think, I assume he is, but I think that they should highlight, he should highlight, his actual pitching ability, uh, because if you don't follow his Twitter, or I know he works with Driveline, uh, which is a company that focuses on pitching and um, just ways to improve it and training and things like that. I know he works with them. Maybe he should be showcasing that kind of thing um, to show, you know, I'm I'm still a good pitcher. I'm still look what I how well I improved because I think a lot of it also is. People don't know he was out of baseball for two years. And like I said, he won, he won the Cy Young in 2020, but people still argue it because it was a shortened season because of COVID. So I think that he really needs to show baseball and fans, Hey, look what I can still do, or even maybe do better. And I think somebody would be willing to take a chance on him. Yeah, and if you look at his Twitter, he Would you rather break the single it, season he's got record, a lot of clips on here. Mm-hmm. It's him just talking about, it, and then the, it's him at the batting cage. I have cage. 20 throws to hit these five targets, which, which should is be easy. funny because it's almost like he was I in the major leagues. Like, why should he have to almost like, Ooh. you know, 
become famous count? on TikTok. <laughs> That's it one, just right? seems like he's got to almost start that it. That's from the two. beginning. Like, oh hey, goodness. look, remember me? I'm, I'm like a really good don't picture. Get drunk, and uh, I, I guess he's thinking like, maybe I have to go kind of viral or just I hit three have a real social media and presence to just remind people left, that he's he's still in great shape. He's still can do a good job. But it's interesting because you said you said earlier people may not like his personality, and I wonder, would you consider Trevor Bauer to be like more based or more right wing or more just says what's on his mind, uh, doesn't tiptoe um, his, around his feelings? I mean, people don't like to hear this, but in general, I think most baseball players are Republican because it's they make a money, business <laughs> with money a lot of business. money. So people don't like to hear that, but in all honesty, I think that most people just are professional and don't say where they stand because it ends up in backlash like this. Um, I think that Bauer was a little bit more outspoken about it. And yes, I think he leans right wing probably because so do I. And I tend to agree with him on a lot of things. Um, but I, I mean, I, you know, people don't like that. People don't, I don't know, people like to say that they're about empathy and compassion and things like that. But then if I say my, myself, if I say something that leans right wing, I get responded with all kinds of hate speech and, and things like that. So I think that that probably doesn't contribute to uh, his image either. Um, Unfortunately, I mean, the, the media spins things, makes it way worse all over Twitter, too. And then people read articles and they just see or they even they just read headlines and assume this this is exactly what happened. This is what is said. Um, so I do think he leans right wing. And that's why I said, you know, maybe it would be in his best interest uh, to be a little more professional and personally. I don't care. I'm I'm not uh, I'm not that way. I have been offered to go on other podcasts and declined because I would be canceled the same day. So, <laughs> um, but I know that you and I share similar views because you like my tweets. So, um, I felt comfortable to to be here. So, I think whether he shows that way or not i think that he should he it would be in his best interest to be a little more professional because people unfortunately do care i don't have anything to lose so yeah uh, my my fiance is self-employed there's nobody that's gonna tell us oh no you're canceled over tweets so but he doesn't have that you know when you when you're in the eye of all over the place when you have the status that he does and people are looking at you and scrutinizing every aspect of your life, they're not going to like that. So I think that if he were a little bit more professional, just on social media, just with the, with the media when he's interviewed, even if he has to bite his tongue, mm. it, it might give him some more uh, career paths. It might open it up to, you know, he can go back to baseball and he can win a, a Cy Young again, or he can have a longer extension because what you don't want is to be a baseball player who's aging and can't find a job because there's a lot like, of them. like poor Brett and, Gardner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I, I love think he him. should come back and be a coach for the Yankees because he's never played for anywhere else, and I I wouldn't like to see him anywhere else. So. I thought Brett Gardner had a, had a fun personality. I always like when he would get mad and he'd get back in the dugout and he'd take his bat and he would just like jam it. He would just like yeah. hit the top of the dugout over and over again. Like, I don't know. And he had, he had like a super huge neck. See, these yeah, are the things yeah. that I enjoy. He likes to throw his helmet a lot too. Yeah, he was right. funny. See, I wonder if the Yankees are interested in him. They go, all right, Trevor, you, we're going to sign you, but you do have to cool it a little bit. Like, could he do that? Could he? Because I, I agree with you. His personality, his tweets, his YouTube presence are are what make him so lovable. And so, but would he be willing to maybe quiet that a little bit to to get a chance to play for the Well, Yankees? a lot of people say, uh, so Garrett Cole 
and Trevor Bauer. If you don't know, Garrett Cole and Trevor Bauer, um, I believe they went to school together and they played baseball they together back then. And they had their issues because they're uh, just different personalities, I think. They had their issues. And people people like to say that too. Bauer shouldn't come to the Yankees because other players wouldn't like him. He wouldn't mesh with them. But he, he claims that they're fine now. Um, but the reason I brought that up is I think Eric Cole is very good at interviews, very good at being professional, always seems to have the right answer. And Aaron Judge as well. There's a lot of players on the Yankees that are very good at that. And I have several books that I've read about the Yankees and their media and how they handle things. So I, I do think with the right training, um, I think if as long as he was willing, and I think he would, um, I think that he could improve his image. He could be more professional and just, re you know, I mean, unfortunately, everybody has, most people have a job that they have to go to and you can't say certain things or behave certain ways because, well, there's a response that other people won't like. There might be consequences. So again, I don't care that he behaves that way. I like him, but yeah. other people do. And sometimes in order to get what you want, you have to bite your tongue or accommodate you other people too. A little yeah. yeah, that's just the reality of it. It's okay to be an outspoken leftist, an outspoken liberal. Uh, you know, we see it all the time with in basketball, with like LeBron. Like he can, he can be. You can be a, a, the biggest activist. It doesn't matter if you're if you're a left wing. But I guess that's the athletes that we think are generally pretty quiet. I think that can that spells out uh, where they lie politically, and they're just being smart and they're trying to just preserve their careers. So yes, uh, Garrett Cole and Trevor Bauer uh, were both on the UCLA Bruins baseball team. And I guess that's where their rivalry began. I'm, I'm reading this off of Wikipedia. According to Bauer, when uh, Cole told him he had no future in baseball at the end of their freshman season in 2009, Bauer led the team with nine wins, a 2.99 ERA, and 105 and a third innings pitched, also getting named to the Pac-10 Conference Baseball Newcomer of the Year. That summer, he played for the USA Baseball Collegiate National Team. Uh, let's see. Wow. That's so interesting. Very, very cool. Okay. I'm going to pull up this clip that Trevor was recently on with Tommy Lauren. Let me see here. Because I thought this was a really interesting interview. I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> My favorite question that she asked. Let's see. Yeah, this is the this is the interview that a lot of people are taking clips from where he's saying, like, I'm done with rough sex acts. <laughs> he's gonna be just very careful about I think who he picks to date. He might be just, I could understand him swearing off dating for a while and just being like, yeah, I'm, I'm just going to be single forever. Thanks. Let me see if it's this. Yes, it is. So at around, what's the clip here? Yeah. At around 1130. So Tommy Lauren asks Trevor, <laughs> basically kind of very bluntly, like, well, why do you, why did you pick like such bad females? I think it's, it's a pretty funny clip. Let me pull it up. Money and they have variety and they have fame. Let's pull it back. And oh. it's scrolling. What? Okay. Yeah, this was she was talking about so the text. Whole. Um, ultimately, what I want is to kind of be an example of what can happen. Um, when you aren't, aren't uh, when you don't apply enough scrutiny to your personal life, when you act in an undisciplined way, and this is something that happens to athletes all the time, um, far more than the public knows, because you know people pay money and things like this go away. It happens to really any anyone in in uh, position of power or with with money it's um 
it, it's a, a fairly common thing and and hopefully right. I, okay so he says basically like he was blindsided by the whole thing he just coach, like i guess like he was kind of naive about position, like, how women can be have money and they have notoriety and they have fame and all eyes are on them why do you pick such bad females <laughs> why do you pick such bad girls <laughs> because oh, it's not just it's you it's a pattern but i'm just wondering i mean they always we say like like girls like bad boys, but do Tommy literally looks like Barbie like in this interview. Girls that are gonna get them in. Trouble? She sounds like I, a big you sister explain right this now. To me, the attraction there. You're not the only one. It's a matter. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a couple things on that. One, I, I can't speak for other people. Of course, I don't know why other people make the decisions they make. Um, I can speak for myself and what I was thinking at the time. Um, what I think now. Um, you know, I, at the time I'd, you know, be on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, whatever social media app. And there's a ton of, uh, incoming requests. Um, and his DMs are popping. He's trying to say <laughs> a lot of people into my life without any sort of scrutiny. And at the time I wasn't looking for any sort of like committed relationship. And so I thought, you know, if I treat people with respect and, um, I treat them kindly, which I did. See, he probably thought approaching life like, oh, I'm just dating around. I don't want anything serious. He probably thought that was going to make his life easier. Uh, and in fact, it, it opened him up to being taken advantage of in this way. Because I think if he approaches dating now, like, hey, I only really want something serious or maybe I'm looking for a wife, like it's going to filter out these women that are really just trying to get him for his money or just manipulate him in a hookup situation you know what could go wrong I, I just didn't really pay any attention to it um you know my perspective on on that has changed dramatically uh in the last couple of years um yeah you know, obviously a lot can go wrong even when you you know don't break any laws or you know do everything you know you can to, to be on yeah the same she page like did this person. all to herself um so, you know, I'm applying a lot more scrutiny to, yeah. to my life now. I'm looking for different things. Um, yeah, I've tightened up my circle a lot. So he um, tightened up his circle. That's number one. That add value to my life instead of just, you know, something that I'm doing for a couple hours on a night and then kind of forget about. <laughs> some or someone um, that I'm doing. Yeah, for it a sounds couple really hours. bad to say, but that's yeah. kind of my mindset at the time uh, and my mindset on it now. I, you know, I've stopped doing. Trevor, you didn't mention the crazy hot index that we all know and love. Like the the hotter a woman is, the more crazy you'll put up with. But I guess I guess he's trying to be serious. I've stopped having like casual sexual relationships. Um, you know, I've stopped agreeing to engage in rough sex acts. It's uh, you know, <laughs> well, I would I'm hope very... so, Trevor. I I would yeah. hope. Yeah. I would. I feel like he's being hard on himself. Like, but he did have some hard lessons to learn. I hope that you are. Uh, essentially the Pope at, at this point, I'm sure you've learned a lot, but you have to tell me too, because I, I'm looking at these text messages and it, at least it looks like a lot of this was premeditated. She's talking about getting your money, you being her next victim, her next target. Uh, was there any point in your brief relationship situationship with this girl that you felt like you were being set up? Could you see the signs like, there? Nope. You're like, mm, which is so shocking to me. This girl's in this for the like, wrong reasons. Why don't they, Not Angelica, just why don't they, when you get signed to your first professional team, there should be a person who sits you down and goes, okay, guess what? Your DMs are about to blow up. You're about to have a lot of crazy fucking chicks in your messages. A lot of them are going to be horny sluts, which is fine, I guess. But some of them are going to want your money. Like, why don't they get any type of training like i'm sure they get some kind of a pr training why don't they get uh like female training or is it just maybe they do and these guys are i mean just like anybody else who doesn't get a lot of attention their whole lives and then they suddenly do it's just it's it's hard to to uh fight off fight the moonlight i guess well i mean i guess if i have to answer a question i would assume it's because they're focus on training would be professionally, not personal, <laughs> but yeah. unfortunately, um, you know, it see, I mean, everybody had to learn a lesson at some point, unfortunately his was publicly, but it, it makes you feel bad for him because he seems like he's just kind of 
innocent. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I just wanted somebody to have sex with and uh, didn't really think she was coming after my money. Um, the only thing, I mean, I don't know if you know, she's actually, because I know people are going to say this to me, she's actually not the only person that has come forth and uh, claimed that this happened. There were two, I believe, two other women. Um, wow. And I'm just mentioning that because I know that that's going to be a discussion that people say, oh, it's not just her. And people like to say that, you know, if there's multiple women, but I, I mean, that there's also not only one woman in the world that would like to come after an athlete's money. And if he was having casual sex, then it makes sense that there's more than one. I know that he said he currently only has one lawsuit pending against him, but he is confident that he'll win that one as well. Yeah, I think, you know what, if you're a broke dude, you can go ahead and choke girls for fun. But if once you reach (laughs) a certain tax bracket, you (laughs) you can't choke anyone for any reason. Um, oh, Frank just added a poll. Thank you, Frank. Added a poll to, so if you're watching on YouTube, uh, there is a poll going on right now. Choking in the bedroom. I guess you can invite, what, vote pro or against? Or is this what people do or what baseball players do? No, there's three options. Three options? One is yes, daddy. One is yes, daddy. <laughs> One is hell no. One is hell no. And then there's maybe what she looks like. And three is maybe what does she look like? Oh, my gosh. I just think hell all... No. All these professional athletes need this kind of relationship training. Um, yeah, I know that Derek Jeter famously gave out fruit baskets. Gift he would baskets, send a girl. Yeah. He would send a girl home with a fruit basket, an edible arrangement, an NDA. Uh, he knew that he knew the drill. <laughs> I don't know if I know A Rod dated um, J Lo. I don't know any of his and Kate Hudson. And Kate Hudson, see, he did pretty well for himself. And Madonna. and Madonna. Oh, wow. Wow. Ugh. Well, I guess he got in there before she started looking like an alien. Good for A Rod. Uh, it's just, it's so. <laughs> these, these hoes be my, crazy, is what I'm trying to say. My fiance commented and said he takes offense to the tax bracket, but you don't have to worry <laughs> about that because I like to be choked too. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, I'm obsessed with you, Angela. Angela, <laughs> let, let me see if there's anything else interesting on this clip here. Casual hookup, but because she's looking for something a little more than that. No, I... Uh... Did, how did he end up getting these these texts? Did she post them? Or or would they did they come up in the discovery part, I guess, of the lawsuit? I'm assuming that's how it happened. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. She's not going to be posting these. Ooh, that's so dumb. Why would you even make these allegations if you know you have these texts? Is she just naive about the process? I guess because so. I mean there was also a police call that was going around publicly, like it was written out. Um and she asked like how many times he hit her in the head and things like that. But I mean his responses were always we had a safe word. I kept asking if you were wow. okay. And you always responded. You always said you were okay. So I kept going. And he was like, you like you always seemed like you were enjoying yourself. Like you were talking. Like I kept asking if you were okay, if you wanted to use a safe word, and you never did. So, I mean, there's, there's honestly no point that I'm reading any of this going, she didn't want what mm-hmm. happened. It's so sneaky. It just makes me so angry because uh, I just... But again, like these are just the lessons that athletes, really anybody who, I feel like every guy at this point needs to be aware of this kind of stuff. Because even if you're not, uh, you know, super rich yet, a, a girl can take advantage. Um, Frank has sent me a message. Oh, we have A Rod's dating history. Mm-hmm. Who is, is A Rod? This is a little aside. Uh, we're just going to sidestep into an A Rod article. While we're on the subject, a a Rod's a listers. Who has a Rod dated? Who's better looking, a Rod or Jeter? I would say, I think I would say a Rod is a little better looking. Okay, let's see, let's see. Jacqueline Cordiero. I don't know who that is. Oh, business, a Canadian businesswoman who owns a fitness program called Jack Fit. All right, that's cute. He dated Catherine Paget. I don't know who that is. 
Um, a fitness competitor from Dallas. Okay. Oh, he dated J Lo for, from 2017 to 2021. That is so, that's a lot longer than I thought. I think they got married, didn't they? They got engaged. Yeah, they were How supposed to get married in the spring of 2020. I don't know. Like, she's been married to and, a lot of people. Yeah, the, the pandemic, and now she's got like a bajillion dollar mansion uh, with Ben Affleck. She went back to she went back to Benifer. Okay, uh, he dated Anne Wajiki. I wonder if there's any relation to Susan Wajiki, who I think used to be um, the CEO of YouTube. Yes, I think it is. I think this is a sister. Um, she's the co-founder of 23andMe, one of the uh, Forbes uh, 100 Most Powerful Women of 2020. That's so shocking because she is a regular ass looking girl. <laughs> Wow, but she rich. Tori Wilson. Meanwhile, A-Rod looks exactly. It hasn't aged one day. Um, Tori Wilson. Who's that? Do, 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 do. She is. Oh, a WWE star. Okay. Maybe A-Rod likes to be choked. Then he was with Cameron <laughs> Diaz from 2010 to 2011. That's cute. That's cute. Kate Hudson in 2009. Bethany Frankel, uh, well, they can't all be tens. She's a little banged up looking, in my opinion. And Madonna, he dated in 2008. If this is how she looked in 2008, then no judges from me. Uh, she da He dated Cynthia Skirtis from 2002 to 2008. She was... Okay, I think that um, one was his wife, yep. Okay, this was the ex-wife. That right. one he married. Oh, wow. Um, the marriage surprise. Oh, okay. She left because he cheated. Okay. Extramarital affairs. But you know what? Maybe she got a nice fruit basket <laughs> when she divorced. That's a, she did pretty well for himself. I wonder who he's with now. If anybody in the chat knows, just holler. I don't know okay. who he's dating, but I know he still has a, a clothing line for, I believe it's a golf, golf. And he also still occasionally uh, announces some some baseball games. Um, so I still, uh, I think Apple TV and Fox, maybe he has contracts with. So he's still, even though he's not playing anymore, he's still kind of active in the baseball world. Okay. Do you think any of these outlets that, ostracized trevor bauer will really go out of their way to yeah do you think they'll sort of publicly or privately reach out and apologize or issue any kind of like a formal separate no, i don't or they'll just lay low i don't i mean we have everything everything else that happened covid and everything else and nobody ever apologizes they just it's true Still waiting about my, it and my COVID apology. It's not gonna happen. No, no they want to round us so. up into camps. Yeah. <laughs> they, uh I know. And then people are like, oh, why are you so obsessed with the vaccine? It's like, oh, okay, you got you guys wanted us to not be part of society. I think I can be a little obsessed with it for a while. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I am excited to see what happens with Trevor. Is there would he just how does it work? Like, how do you, you don't really like audition for the Yankees. They would have to reach out to him. Or I guess any team that's interested in him would have to, well, like put in a bid. When does this, when does Frank, when does the scouting start? When do the picking, when does the picking happen? Scouting's always, uh, but February is spring training. February is spring training. So that's so soon. Ooh. Okay. Yeah, but there's been players that have been signed recently. I mean, the Yankees just signed Juan Soto. Otani was signed by the Dodgers. There's been a lot of big scene signings um, recently. So I I know that he went to the winter meetings, like I said. So I feel like there are MLB teams that were, I assume they're at least willing to talk to him. I know he's been linked to the Mets, at least through rumors. Um, I hope that he will get another chance somewhere. Yeah. Ew. He's just a big old. Sorry, there's a stink bug. A stink bug. Oh, we get those sometimes. Rug. 
I just killed him. You just I caught it with your bare hands? Okay. Well, whatever. he was climbing on the table. Aren't you not supposed to squish them? Because I I was told that they let out. I didn't squish um, him. I just like killed him. He's, he's still whole. See? You're <laughs> picking him up with your hands. See, this is. You're the best. You're the best. Yeah, you know, I was raised by my dad. I'm not <laughs> I uh, it, oof, no, I, I see. I would pick up a lot with, of stuff with my bare hands. Insects. I, that's just. I, I can't with insects. They creep me out too much. Uh, there's also another interesting topic I wanted to get to with you, and. This is kind of the first time this has happened. Uh, Yankle, uh, Yankees single A manager Rachel, Rachel Balkovec is hired as Marlins director of player development. She is making history for the MLB. She is the first woman to be hired. Um, she is a pioneering manager in the Yankees minor league system. She's agreed to become the Miami Marlins next director of player development. She's 36. Uh, she's the first woman to become a full-time strength and conditioning coach for an affiliate affiliated minor league team. Then in 2020, she blazed a trail when the Yankees made her the first woman to be a full-time hitting coach for a major league organization. Um, she was named manager of the Tampa. I almost said tampons. Those are that's Tampa tarpons. <laughs> Why would they call the team something <laughs> so similar to tampons? <laughs> look at there look some other minor league teams. There's worse. <laughs> Tampa tarpons. Come <laughs> on. This is their ass. They really are asking for it. Uh, the Yankee single <laughs> affiliate in the Florida state league. She served in that role over the last two seasons. Okay. So she's had major league experience, but okay. She studies human movement sciences with a focus on biomechanics. Okay. That's lovely. Um, with the Marlins, who have not yet confirmed or announced the move, Balkovic is posed to fill a vital and powerful role in the front office under the new president of baseball operations, Peter Bendix. His predecessor uh, is head of Miami's baseball operations, was Kim Ng, the first female general manager in MLB history. Do you think a woman is qualified to uh, coach a, a major league team? Well, I, I don't think, think it should be based on gender at all. I think um, if the person has the a history, a background in it, and she understands what she's doing, and she can demonstrate it, and she's a good candidate for the job, then absolutely she should be a manager. Um, I mean, the same as anything else. You know, there's there's new news articles saying with the whole DEI diversity inclusion, all of that. I mean, that they want to make pilots like 50% black. I don't know about you, but I want the pilot who's best going to fly the plane because I'd like to get there and not crash. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so I mean, the same goes for baseball. I want somebody who has experience, knows what they're doing. If a candidate is interviewed and she's the best person for the job and she happens to be a woman, absolutely, I want her to be the manager because you should want the best person for the job. Okay, so my husband, who was a baseball player and is a huge Yankees fan, he compared it to a swimmer or a swim coach trying to coach diving, which is a sport I did from 11 years old all throughout college, Division One. And I was like, well, okay, if you're putting it that way, a swimmer or a swim coach is not equipped at all to coach diving. They're two completely different sports, but that's what he compared it to. Would you agree that just a woman who has never herself been able, been able to play in the major leagues uh, would be able to coach or would know what they're going through, be able to, to speak to that, even though she hadn't done. Well, it there's, um, there's managers that haven't played baseball before either. So, I mean, if they've never played the sport professionally, she may still know more than them. I, I think it would, they would be better suited uh, to be somebody that has played the game and understood most managers are, ex-players um because they're in the game they're involved with the players they understand everything they don't need additional training so ideally i think it would be better to have an ex-player but again if she can demonstrate that she's capable of handling handling the job and she's the best player out there or the best person out there to do it i don't see any reason not to give her a shot Okay, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, because if she's sucking, then people will roll their eyes and be like, all right, this is a diversity hire. 
Well, um, you'll you'll get that anyway. You'll get that anyway. Sure. I mean, as a as a female baseball plant a fan, I still get comments that I should be in the kitchen and I like them because of they wear tight pants, and that's not true. <laughs> Uh, because I that's had to how I feel. baseball. <laughs> well, that's okay, but that's not why I like it. <laughs> I came for the tight pants, but I am staying because I am now uh, genuinely liking baseball more thanks to Frank over here. Um, okay, you have, that was going to be my next question. Do you get a lot of shit from people disregarding your opinion on baseball just because you're a chick? Does that happen all the time? Not all the time. I mean, I, I have a good amount of followers, I think, on Twitter and people talk to me about baseball. People usually respect my opinion, but I mean, people that don't know me. Yeah, I definitely get some judgments of, oh, you're a female. You don't know what you're talking about. But I'm also pretty good at proving that I do and talking circles around them. And then there you stop talking. So <laughs> and you're like in your face. Yes, everyone go and follow uh, Angelica right now at little, I say little gel, but it's L T T L E G E L right now all about to hit 6,000 followers. I think we could do that tonight, guys. If we all just head on over to Twitter, click the little clicky click follow button. I think we can make it happen tonight. Get up in there. Oh, we have a question from Frank. Would Angelica rather have Trevor Bauer, Dylan cease? Is that how you say his name? Cease or mm -hmm. Blake Snell? on the Yankees this year. Mm -hmm. Can we have can we have multiple? We, the Yankees need multiple. Um they they definitely have like one or two pitchers that are better than them. So I, I would actually like to see them get multiple pitchers. Um I think I think Cease is probably maybe the better pitcher out there. Um, but I would I would definitely like to have Snell too. And I mean I, I like all of them, but it's hard to I no disrespect to Trevor Bauer, but it's hard to compare him to the other two because they're actively in baseball and I can see what they're doing. Um okay. so I, I would rather have Cease or Snell over Bauer, but it's because they're still actively in baseball and I can see what they're they're doing. Um, if it were up to me, I'd take them all because the Yankees need their rotation filled out really badly. Who did they lose? That was that was good. Oh, didn't they? Um, they traded that one guy Domingo that you like, Herman. Domingo Herman. Was he a pitcher? Oh, he was yeah. like the black guy, right? Or was he Dominican? He hit someone. Well, <laughs> he hit his wife. He he oh, his that's such a that's such a football move. Why are we doing that in baseball? Come on. <laughs> Well, you know, she married him and had a kid with him after, so I'm not defending it, but right. she, didn't, she didn't leave either. But, um, yeah, but yeah, well, they took a lot of risks. So they had uh, Frankie Montas who got injured, and then they signed Carlos Rodon who also got injured, and they didn't really pitch last year. So now they're kind of like, they have uh, Garrett Cole, and hopefully Nestor Cortez is as good as he was before he got hurt. But that's kind of it. Um, they they have a lot of maybes. They have a lot of their bullpens great. They could fill in some innings there. But they absolutely need uh, some pitching. Okay. And you said Garrett and Trevor Bauer, they, they kind of don't have any beef anymore. Well, yeah, that was so that's long Bauer ago. Blames? So, I mean, Bauer claimed and he tweeted and when people asked him about it, um, and I, I actually like that, I, you know, we went back to, I said he should be more professional, but at the same time, how many, how many baseball players can you tweet to and they actually respond? I think, I think it's great that he does. Um, yeah. But somebody asked him if he wanted to join the Yankees and if he was the things that happened between him and Cole were in the past. And he said that it's been squashed for a while and he would love to. So okay. I don't know if Garrett Cole agrees. I don't know. Honestly, I don't even really know exactly what happened between them. Um, other than like what you said that they, you know, they had some issues in college where he said he wouldn't have a future in baseball. But beyond that, I don't know. Um, yeah. But I, I would clearly like he's to been see on some Cole teams. Speak about it. Yeah, yeah, I would like to see Cole speak about it. But um, 
I don't know if he will because he's also really professional. What I will say is there's been a lot of rumors of people saying Bauer's a really bad teammate. But Ooh. he was but he was on the Dodgers last and Mookie Betts, who is highly regarded in baseball for his skills and his professionalism. And he said that he was a very good teammate and he didn't see him that way. And that was the last team that he pitched with. Interesting. So okay, cool. I think that he saw something different there. Matthew Hammond uh, says the best name for a baseball team was an independent league club in Canada called the London Rippers. The mascot was Jack. Oh, that's cute. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, I thought you meant like rippers of farts, but I guess that's true too. Okay, now we're going to do this very fun MLB logo quiz. We're going to quiz Angelica's skill. Can she name the MLB teams uh, which have each of these logos? Ooh, okay. Is this that's a time? Right, Zach. <laughs> Is this a time <laughs> quiz? Yeah, scroll down a little. Oh, we scroll down and we. Okay, so should I not look at this, or am I looking at that? Oh, this is going to be harder because they changed some of them. They got rid of Chief Wahoo. Scroll down. Okay, I'm scrolling down, and then I'm hitting play quiz. And then you're going to type as fast as she talks. I'm going to type as fast as she talks. Okay, are we ready, Angelica? Yeah. One, Do two, I, and Are three. they going to show okay. one at a time? Or, okay, yes. Yankees. They, yeah. Okay, what's this one? With the ball and the... Is that the lines. Dodgers? Because I don't see a different one for them. Oh, you're right. The you're White right. Sox, the Blue Jays, the Mets, the Diamondbacks. Ah! Oh, I know the, the Red, Red Sox are over here. Okay. Red Sox, okay, Braves, one. Cubs. Ah. Oh, you're good. Okay. I know this one. Philly. Yep. This one. Rays? Is that the Rays? Yep. Astros. Oh, you're doing good. Okay. Look at this one. I don't know who that one is. All right. Padres. I, I don't know that one, but the next one's the Padres, the Indians. The next. Okay. Okay. Angels, the Orioles, the Marlins. I'm on the next row. So, <laughs> the C. Okay. Let's I guess listen. I got to you know down. Do we know the C one here? Uh, yeah, that's the Indians. They, they changed it. It used to be the Chief Wahoo. What are they now? Well, they were the Cleveland Indians. Now they're the Guardians because everybody got offended. I like Chief Ooh, Wahoo. you're correct. And this one is Angels, you said? Angels, Orioles, Marlins. Oops. Orioles, Marlins. Athletics, Rockies. What about this one? It looks like just a regular baseball to me. It does. All right, I don't know that one either. Pirates, Rangers, Cardinals, okay, Nationals, Tigers. <laughs> Rangers, uh, Cardinals. Well, duh, that's easy. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this one. Nationals, Tigers. Ooh, another baseball. I don't know that that's one. The hard. Mariners, the Royals, and the Reds. So I missed three. <sighs> wow, really good. Okay, okay, let's go back to this one here. God, what could this be? Which one? Oh, that. Yeah, I don't know that one. Just the plain baseball. Or the two right. baseballs. Should we look at the chat? Does the chat know? Somebody said there was a giant, the Giants. Giants? But... Let me see. And the chat said Crips. Incorrect. Wrong <laughs> game. Um, Cleveland, do you think? No, Cleveland's at the C here. What the hell? To me, it almost looks like. The Braves. Does anybody know? The Braves is the chalk because they do the tomahawk thing. Oh, right. See, okay. they haven't changed their name. That's Indian no. related. They still do the the chop thing too. People don't like that. Yeah, but... good. They shouldn't they should keep doing it. Um Maybe. chat, Jets, Buccaneers, Giants, Brewers. We did this. I think we did Brewers. That. Okay. Which one's the Brewers? That's a team I didn't name. You're right. Which one's the Brewers? Giants right, Brewers are ones I didn't name. Uh oh. Brewers are the ones with the barley. The barley on it. This? Bottom one. This one? Bottom. Oh, this one. Oh, Brewers, you're right. So this one here. 
Giants, maybe? Yes! Okay, now we just have this one left. Oh, chat. We're relying on you. We got a minute and 20 left. The Cracker Jacks. <laughs> what? You know it? Oh, Frank, you knew this whole time? Yeah. Okay. The twins. Oh, good call. Yeah, yes! This the is in the chat, the twins. Very good. We got an 82. Well, there's like nothing to that. There's loads of respite. Wow. Well, it's really impressive. I got See, 27 I, out of 30. That's all right. That's fantastic. I wouldn't have known the Dodgers. I would I I knew this one. I knew this one. I knew that one. I would by myself, okay. I wouldn't have known the Rays. I wouldn't have known the Twins. I was just in San Diego, so I would have gotten that. Um I would have gotten the Guardians just because I was watching the whole gay name change. So that's why I would have <laughs> Orioles, that's obvious. Um, Marlins, yeah. Rockies, maybe not. Definitely these baseball ones I wouldn't have known. Pittsburgh, I would have. I, I would have done probably pretty bad. Very cool. Oh, my gosh. You're just um, a baseball genius, Angelica. This has been really cool to talk to you about this. I'm so excited to see what is in store for Trevor. I hope. So if he doesn't get the Yankees, what would be your top, I don't know, maybe two or three other teams you think he would enjoy or he would do well on? Well, I think he is competitive, and I think you want to go to a winning team. And uh, the Dodgers, I think, where he was, um, they definitely, they seem to have signed nearly every free agent and they won the World Series a few years ago and they're always good. Um, I like to call them on, the Yankees. He was on the Dodgers before. The Dodgers booted him when all these allegations started, yeah. right? He, so I they... mean, I don't know if they would take him back, but he would probably like to go there. I like to call them the Yankees of the West because they're pretty much the same um, in terms of, they have different personality, but in terms of, culture and wanting to sign big players and win and things like that. Um, I think, like I said, he was linked to the Mets. Um, they need a lot of help too. They sign, they seem to be signing just whoever they can, people that are past their prime. Uh, so maybe they would take a chance on them because they need somebody. The, I mean, the Orioles also, uh, they were really, really bad for a long time. And last year was the first year that they they went from literally being the worst team in the league to in the playoffs. So maybe they would take a chance on Bauer because they want to get over that hump and actually make it to the World Series and win since they were so bad for so long. Um, I mean, there's a lot of teams. I would like to see them play when they would be the teams that would be more likely to win, but I don't know if they would be willing to take a chance on him. So when would be the latest that he could get signed to a team if straight, if training starts next month? Um, it usually starts in, yeah, it does. I guess that is next month in February. So it usually would have to be, it definitely would have to be before spring training. Um, so we would only have a couple of weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't know if they brought anybody on like during, training but you obviously want them to have as much time to train with the team as possible i mean some sometimes people can go into spring training and surprise and make a roster spot like but you would have to be invited to spring training as well okay the results of the poll uh they're not all the way finished but it looks like hell no is in the lead <laughs> as far as choking in the bedroom hell no 42 percent. it seems like uh the men are getting wise to to the crazy ladies out there uh, a lot of them are just saying no, no to choking. <laughs> See, this is why we can't have nice things, crazy ladies. Um, Angelica, you're just the best. This was so great. You're so knowledgeable. You're so great to talk to you. I can't wait to have you back uh, as soon as we'll we'll see what happens with Trevor Bauer. Uh, and next time there's baseball drama, I'll for sure have you back to talk about that. Um, everyone follow Angelica on Twitter at l t t l e g e l do the thing like and subscribe any parting 
uh, words, Angelica. Oh, one more from Matthew Hammond. With the Athletics moving to Las Vegas, who else should move their stadium when their stadium lease is up? I think Cleveland should move to Mexico City or Montreal. That's interesting. That's a good question. Uh, I mean, I would be curious to know why he wants them to move out of America. Um, I like that if you don't know, baseball has actually been really active in playing games in other countries lately. And I, I like that, um, but they're not entirely there other than uh, the Blue Jays that are in Toronto. All the other teams are in the US, but they have been playing games in other countries. And I think trying to grow the game and especially for players like Otani, you know, he gets to go back and play in Japan and people love him because he's from there places things like that but i would be curious to know why he would want them to move to another country yeah what's up with that matthew we have to make america great again uh <laughs> free speech thank you for the 9.99 super chat uh, i wonder if i should play a little musical drop for you when it was all yellow. thank you Matthew Hammond, I don't. MLB wants to establish a franchise in these two cities. Oh. Well, excuse me. I guess you're a little <laughs> bit more boned up than I am, Matthew. All right, cool. Uh, Angelica, you're the best. Thank you for coming on. Thank you to the chat for all your comments and questions. This was really, really cool. And I just hope the best for Trevor. I hope, uh, I don't know, I want to see him with a nice girl who's not uh, going to try to rob him blind. <laughs> that would be cool. Maybe he can date J-Lo next. <laughs> All right, guys, this was great. We will catch you next time. 